Hey, what's up? It's Chanel. Welcome to Vital Vinyl Vlog. This is a new installment of Awesome Albums. Today, we'll be listening to one of the first inductees to Awesome Albums, and that's California's Autopsy Severed Survival. This death metal classic is just 100% totally fucking essential if you're a fan of death metal. Like, you obviously know already how good this is. If not, go check out my awesome album's take on it. And I would like to induct the mighty Black Sabbath Volume 4 into the awesome album's annals, or annals, whatever the fuck it's called. But everything about this record, from the iconic cover to just the tunes alone, even FX, like the song, everything is fucking gold on here. Like, for 1972, like, oh my god. And this is one of the, um, the end is near, uh, reissues. And this happens to come on a monstrous orange 180 gram vinyl as you just saw and it's fucking beautiful looking and you also have an awesome you know kind of putting different covers for the tomorrow's dream single and a gigantic you know write up about the album by malcolm dome and this record's just i love this but I kind of wish I had the uh, the booklet version. I saw that um, Sean has the uh, it has a booklet and stuff instead of just this picture. This is all like a like part like this, you know, like a book. It, it looks like that, but with a lot more photos and stuff. I think I'm not a hundred percent positive, but just. Pretty much, I, I hate to say, you know, the beginning of the end for Black Sabbath, but this record, you know, kind of marked the end of their traditional sound, you could say, and more on to, you know, a little experimentation, which there's nothing wrong with that, because this record turned out like a fucking monster which it is, and the same goes for Sabbath Bloody Sabbath. They're just fucking, you know, a little bit different than the other, than Master of Reality, like, which I'm sure most people would have went for when it comes to, you know, an album from Sabbath that, you know, means more than the others to you. I have to choose volume four, just for nostalgic and other reasons because this is the record that actually made me like Black Sabbath like it was probably 1998 and I never really like I always thought it was just too like slow kind of and that sounds stupid now because like that's like I love slow heavy shit but back in the day you know it was like I want to hear more of an angel because it's fucking like fast, you know? Like I was into that type of shit. So this on the other hand, like as soon as I heard Supernaut, it was in a bike video, an FBM video called Albert Street. And uh, I was just like, yo, like this is, I, that, like, this is awesome. And then same year, 1998, um, a song from Sabotage, uh, Symptoms of the Universe was in Little Devil Seek and Destroy and I was a Black Sabbath fan. I started picking up uh, because I didn't know like at that point in time what albums these songs were on. I picked up We Sold Our Soul for Rock and Roll. It's kind of like a little best of thing and uh, yeah it just really really turned me on to Black Sabbath and like I remember this company, again, I'm bringing up BMX, and I know that throws a lot of you in the dark, but Dead Memory had this on a t-shirt, but it said Dead Memory instead of Black Sabbath. I mean, there's even a skateboard company called Volume 4. It's just that fucking influential to where, you know, I really want to talk about the music because 
Iomi's riffs on this thing are just probably, in my opinion, his best. And as much as I love Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath, and Master of Reality, I just have to keep going back to that. This album is just a little bit different and a little bit just... I just, I don't know, I fucking love it. And imagine seeing Black Sabbath in a venue that small. Sorry that lights in the fucking, it's making glares, but that's a small ass fucking room. And that's Black Sabbath in their fucking prime. I mean, they obviously, like, <laughs> cocaine had a lot to do with uh, the recording of this album, obviously, I mean. Fucking listen to the lyrics as fucking Snowblind. It's kind of, you know, right in your face. But Wheels of Confusion, Tomorrow's Dream, Changes, FX, Supernaut, Snowblind, Cornucopia, Laguna Sunrise, St. Vitus Dance, and Under the Sun. It's flawless, front to back. And you might say, you fucking say that a lot. Yeah, I do. Because I don't buy albums that I, you know, don't like. I'm not rich. Like, I kind of, like, this was pretty expensive, you know, for... I bought it from my local record store, and uh, it was pretty, you know... It's worth it, though. Like, I, I'd rather support my local record store than fucking, you know, order this from some... I don't know if distros even have Warner Brothers albums, to be honest. Like, distros I order from, I mean, maybe 20 bucks spin would have, like, this. But, I, I don't really know. I never really looked up Black Sabbath on an underground music distro. So, I went to my local record store and, yeah, picked it up. And the only reason it was expensive was because... I'm not going to name the record store, but the owner, he, if something's colored, the price goes up. It doesn't matter what he paid for it, you're going to get probably a couple extra dollars tagged onto it, just because it's a colored record. And a lot of, it doesn't really matter, I mean, it's worth it, it's fucking volume four. Like, to me, like I said, this is my favorite Black Sabbath album. And you can crucify me on your copies of Master of Reality. You know, you could stab me with your test press of fucking the self-titled. I don't care. <laughs> like, I just fucking love this album. Like, as much as I love Sabbath Bloody Sabbath, Sabotage, it all just lands on volume four. And in the Dio era, everybody's gonna say mob rules and Heaven and Hell because they're fucking right. <laughs> Those albums are great. Born Again as well is pretty fucking good. Riff wise especially, I really really like the Dio era riffs. Sometimes I'm not a big Dio fan when it comes vocally. Now again that's a blasphemous comment in the metal community but different fucking boats for different folks or whatever that term is. I don't know, I'm lit. But, that's another thing. Like, th this album is just one of those records that, like, pretty much everyone has in their collection, like, regardless if you're a Sabbath fan or not. It's, a, it's fucking essential in every way. Like, like I said, even from the artwork. Like, so many times has this been copied. I'm surprised Sharon Osbourne isn't, like, living in, you know, an even crazier mansion than she's already living in off of her husband's work. And, you know, I'm still pissed about the Bill Ward thing. I know that's off topic, but as awesome as it was to see Sabbath live one last time and my first time, thank you, Tony Rufo, like, hell yeah, thank you. Nine dollar tickets, too? Like, what? awesome time though but like the set list I thought could have been a lot better but you know nine dollars to see Black Sabbath I'll take that any day of the week I don't care what the fuck they're even if they're playing shit off third actually yeah I probably wouldn't go if it was just 
Okay, 13 is not that bad, but I wouldn't go out of my way to listen to it or buy it. Unless, like, I all of a sudden wanted to start, you know, getting all the Black Sabbath records. But I'm not that type of person. I only buy albums that, you know, I used to own physically and don't anymore. And it just became a collection. I mean, I didn't mean to start, you know, getting records every, like, you know, time I have money in my hands. It just, it's just something that once my computer crashed and stuff and I lost everything I had and I had gotten rid of my CDs and cassettes and I'm talking about like over, a, around a decade ago I started getting rid of my CDs and cassettes and stuff. But my cassettes were a complete mistake getting rid of. I used to keep them in a shoebox and I was getting my, um, hold on. I love this fucking riff. So, I mean, all topsy fucking rules, dude. But we're talking about Sabbath. But um, I had all my cassettes in this like shoebox, and I forgot to take it out of my broken down fucking minivan that was towed. And God damn it, shit happens though. But let's talk about some of the tunes on here. I mean, some of my favorites, obviously, like I said, Supernaut. St. Vitus, Dance, Cornucopia. Change is just a great song, but Tomorrow's Dream, to me, sums up this record. It's just a phenomenal just song. It's written amazing. I don't know why it doesn't get radio play. Like, all up the play Iron Man until the fucking, you know, crows come home, but like, like, why? I, it's one of those things I just don't get. You have this insane back catalog, but Clear Channel and Top 40 Radio, whatever, they just choose to, you know, you might hear Sweet Leaf off Master of Reality, but you're not going to hear, like, Orchid or anything, like, sick and awesome off that record. But, anyways, Volume 4 is pretty much the blueprint to modern doom metal. And that's all you really need to know. This is absolutely essential listening. Heavy as fuck. I know this wasn't informative. I just wanted to kiss this album's ass because it fucking deserves it. And again, just because it's so beautiful. Let's just do our own little sunrise. Yeah, sick. But anyways, yeah, this is a new induction to Awesome Albums, Black Sabbath Volume 4. Like I said, I really shouldn't need to talk about it or even, you know, make a 14-minute video about this fucking record. It's just really, really that good and important in the history of extreme music because this really, really, along with Master of Reality and whatnot, just, you know, pretty much wrote the blueprint. If you're a Doom fan, there you go. Along with, like, uh, you know, like I said, uh, Sir Lord Baltimore, I think is their name. They're one of those bands where, you know, before this whole vinyl resurgence picked up, you know, you might be able to find their albums at, like, a mom and pop, uh, you know, record store for, like, $2, where now you're probably going to end up for an original press, uh, I don't even fucking know. Sir Lord Baltimore original presses probably go for like your life, your firstborn child. But check them out because they are fucking killer. I just don't remember what year they came out. But I really, it really does bum me, bum me out that Pentagram had the chance to be the American Black Sabbath, but. They couldn't throw their landlord some, you know, like, like some weed, some food. Say, get the fuck out of here. We have Kiss down the basement. I don't want to spoil the documentary, but let's just say Pentagram had a lot of chances to, you know, reach this um, status that Sabbath did. But, you know, shit happened. Bobby Liebling, whatever. But we were listening to Autopsy. 
Severed Survival, one of the best death metal albums ever. Thanks for watching. Peace.